Hi there. <clears throat> I've not recorded for quite a while, unfortunately. I've been uh, needed in in my university program. Uh, frankly, that's that's over for the summer. While I've not been recording, there has actually been quite a few uh, changes into the system. Uh, my Patreon Zeddy, he's been uh, discussing with me quite a bit, and uh, he's been working on code as well. So we've been bouncing ideas off each other and implemented quite a few different things. Uh, so, as far as the hardware development goes, it's gone through some minor changes since the last recorded, well, maybe major changes. Basically, the memory map remains the same. Uh, let me bring up pictures for that. All right, uh, the memory map is exactly the same as it was last time. Uh, the main system boots at 0000, as it does with a Z80. And then I'm using bank 1 for the RAM. This bank 0 is actually a flash ROM, which I'm only using 16K of it, which is could be considered a waste. Oh, sorry. I haven't shot up here. I was pointing at the screen with my uh, my mouse on the OBS screen, so people have seen the cursor. But anyway, so what we got next here? This here is my uh, Z80 processor card. As the Z80, and this here is the, the power on reset circuit, so it keeps it all nice and clean. But what I did is I moved the RAM and the ROM onto this card here. This is the selection jumpers here. It's hard to see. I uh, really need to label it. So we've got the main ROM here and the main RAM here. Uh, normally this is bank 0, bank 1, which you select on here. But it's not in this case. I'll explain why in a little while. <clears throat> okay, so now um, what we have here now is the this is my original memory expansion card. Well, it's actually not the original, but it's my upgraded memory expansion card, which has been made redundant by putting the ROM and RAM on the main Z80 board. <clears throat> but I did some experimentation with uh, battery backup RAM, but I found that um, I kept getting memory corruption. It, would, it didn't really work too well, so I've removed all that. Well, actually, I've just unplugged the jump here because you could disconnect the battery. And I sampled one of these from Dallas. This is a, it's a nice little chip. I um, actually I sampled a few different ones as well. That's the that's the RAM chip I was using uh, originally. <laughs> Now, over here, you can see we have some jumpers. I can actually tell the system to use this as the um, as bank 2 and 3, as a big 32k chunk, which is the hint dire memory on here. Uh, but as you can see, I've got it disabled here because right now it's actually in bank 0. So this actually contains the system monitor that we're using for development. This up here, I was trying to get an Arduino plugged into it. Um, I got a little Arduino module here, and this would go off to. Uh, I have it up here. No. Hmm. Yeah, I thought I did. Um, I have a uh, a sketch on here that will. Uh, will receive a PS2 keyboard command um, 
I thought, you know, I'd like to have a PS2 keyboard so I could type on it into the system. Um, but I haven't done anything with that. It's not wired up, so basically it's just a socket there. And I, I need to do a IOG address decoding on there to make it work. Uh, so, yeah, so that's the secondary RAM card. The memory bank decoding is based on the 74HCT138 shown here. Uh, this is only half the chip. The second half actually is used for the I.O. decoding, which is the exact same wiring except this is I.O. request. But uh, one thing I decided um, is to not go with the route of 16-bit I.O. Uh, addressing because you need to have an extra um, you need to write something extra to a, a register before you you can send the IO command and also you need all extra circuitry to decode it and I thought at this stage I should just stick with the uh, the tried and true method of just using the old 8-bit ones since so, you know 64,000 or 64k uh, IO addressing sounds nice yes but you know we're going to use them all right now. Maybe uh, a later time may update for that. But anyway, so for now I'm just using this for I/O decoding. So uh, sorry, memory decoding. The I/O decoding is actually currently not being used. But this addresses the the banks as per the uh, the memory map shown before. So that works pretty good. And also, I create a couple of I/O cards. Um, this is how I do my I/O decoding. <clears throat> uh, I'll show you the I/O cards in a minute. But this here is an OR gate. It's the equivalent to an OR gate. But because I, um, because some chips require a active high reset and the system is based on active low reset, I need to invert it. So uh, there's four NAND gates in a package. So the fourth NAND gate is actually an in, used as an inverter in this configuration here, but it's not shown on here. So and this allows us to select the base address of the device that's going to be connected to, uh, to the chip selector. So let's see. Now this here is my serial card, oh, serial interface, it's a UART, it's a 16C550 chip. And I was having trouble with the, with the timings and stuff of it. I used to have a, um, I can't remember the speed of the clock now, mm. 1.6 megahertz clock of some kind around that. Um, but I kept getting corruption in the text, so I've actually now just I'm just feeding the four megahertz clock bus directly into the uh, board clock, and I used the divisor. It has a slight error percentage, but I have not seen any errors whatsoever since I've done that. It's rock solid, which I'm happy with. And what we have here is the these three pins here go out to the DB9 connector. Uh, and that, this is through a TTL to RS232 level converter here. Up here is a, is a, it's a TTL level. So if you're using, you know, like, like one of these types of devices, you know, you can use that. And this here is the circuit as mentioned before. This here, this is the jumper. So, so I can select the base, as you can see. This card is based at I.O. address 08. And uh, it goes up in increments of 8. Okay, and next we have uh, the 8255 uh, parallel I.O. card. I used to have some decoding here, which didn't turn out very well. As you 
So this is uh, it's not been updated yet into the newer boards. See, so yeah, I've got the uh, <coughs> the newer breakout on here. I still use the old Genesis cartridge piece. So. And use the older uh, and the old ore chip rather than using the NANDs. And I'm using the inverter for the one signal, which is you know, I basically these two chips turn into this one chip when I do the conversion. But the circuit is exactly the same, logically anyway. And this one's at base address of it's actually zero zero, I don't know why it's yeah, just ignore. A sticker, <laughs> but it's at zero zero. Okay, what we have here is this will actually connect to one of those Hitachi based uh, LCDs, and this will connect to a keypad, a four by four matrix keypad. I've not done anything with that. Um, Zeddy's been playing with that. He's had some quite success with that. I got the LCD working using his code, but, but since I've switched to uh, the UART, it's you know, I've been more aimed on that. But the individual ports here will, you know, I can read and write to them using the uh, the monitor as well. Hmm. Uh, actually, I think what's next? Okay, this is the memory map I have right now of how my system is currently set. <coughs> I'm sorry. This is how the my system is currently set up right now next to me. Uh, the camera. I put it. I mean, I put my LCD and keypad on a bit of plexiglass stuff, and I've mounted the DB9 connector on there. Got my power switch and my power LED. Really should have mounted a reset as well on an MI, but I haven't. Uh, so yeah, so right now I have the, the flash ROM stuck in bank 2 out of the way at the moment. I'm not really using it right now. But it's good to read it now and again to test things. Now we have the 16k RAM, system RAM here. That's what I'm using. I got the stack at the top. I load my binary files into the bottom and then we got the 16k non volatile RAM so I got the top half of it disabled this is the way the banking works <clears throat> that is working fine which I will uh, I'll do a little demonstration of that in a bit uh, so yeah so a little bit about the monitor is it was created by someone called Matt Cook I did originally write my own but it's um, it lacks a lot of the functions like reading you know when you when you type like uh, inputting values rather than just characters like I did start writing that but I found that Matt Cook made one that's the basic input and output system of it is almost complete for the text uh, side of things but I uh, I built upon it uh, because um, the code he gives you all it does is it will dump uh, chunks of memory from what you type in it that's it or you can reset the system which uh, you know it's it was a it was a great interface that's why I'm using I'm using the interface of it so I had to expand it to make it more useful for myself. So, uh, me and Zeddy have had a play uh, with it, with um, bouncing ideas off what we want for it. He's wrote some some routines. I wrote some routines, and and here's how we have it right now. So it will dump the memory, but with ASCII printouts at the side rather, instead of just the plain hex. Uh, I can read and write to a byte individually. That was the first thing I added, and uh, because the original code you, you couldn't write to anything. Uh, now you can read and write to I/O ports, 
uh, you can clear blocks of memory. Uh, that's that's one that he's been working on, as well as copying blocks of memory. He did that. I've done a routine for testing memory, which is it works for testing, but it's got a bug in it. It doesn't return back to the monitor, so you have to reset the system, which is annoying. Um, what I'm proud of is I have a binary transfer. So I'm using TerraTerm, which I will uh, I'll show you in a minute. But you can send blocks of uh, assembled memory, uh, blocks of assembled code into memory locations of the uh, of the system. You specify where you want it, and then you send the file. And um, I did want to use X mode and protocol, but I've only got so far with getting that working. So I opted to just use a raw transfer and in order to make it return back to the monitor at the end of the transfer and to know when it's finished is I had to write a routine that would receive the character through the serial port with a timeout and if it doesn't receive it within a few milliseconds then it jumps back to the, the monitor and uh, that's working fine I'm really happy with that and the last command in the list which is added that before that was a go command so you can jump to specific locations in memory so I could use the binary transfer to send code and put it in a place in RAM and then when it jumps back to the monitor I can then jump to that location of the RAM and execute that code uh, which is how I've been doing a lot of monitor development in fact the um, the memory testing routine was originally compiled standalone and um, so assembled standalone and transferred in and tested that way. So um, the standalone assembling, it's. I'll have to explain a bit about that. Uh, see if there's any more pictures? Oh, yeah, I've got some pictures of the system, which I've just shown you. The, uh, <coughs> uh, as you can see, I've got some IDE drives in the background here. I do eventually want to attach IDE to the I.O. card, but that's that's an ongoing thing. Uh, okay, so as you can see, we've got the keypad in there, and that, although it's, I've not done anything with the keypad myself, but it's, it's there for when I need it. Uh, these were taken last week, but this is... Uh, this was taken today. The IO card's actually not in it right now. This picture, though I have actually got it in there now. Now it doesn't. Well, I put a little subboard on here that plugs in. It's just um, LEDs and resistors, so I can turn them on and off, and uh, see which lines are active. Uh, yeah, that's after all the pictures. <clears throat> okay, I suppose uh, I'll move on to the, the demonstration part of the, uh, the video. So, <clears throat> I've loaded TerraTerm up. I'm going to bring it up on my screen so I can see it. Where did it go? Oh, it's right here. Right. <clears throat> okay, we'll plug it in. Okay, so let's flick the switch on, and here we go. And question mark for the commands. These are the commands that have been added. Um, the question mark is pretty much the original command that was left there by uh, by Matt Cook. Is it Matt Cook? Is it? Yeah, Matt Cook. I used to just see an M Cook written here. <laughs> And so yeah, so D will dump locations of memory. And okay, let me just some changes here. Right. Yeah, the it wasn't showing the. Uh, the bottom of the window. 
Right. <clears throat> so yeah, this is it, it. Looks exactly the same as it was originally when uh, when Matt made it, except I added this bit to the side. So let's find something a bit more interesting. Uh, so one, two, zero, so, yeah, there we go. See, you can actually see. Let's see it. Let's, let's reset it so we can get the banner. Yeah, so you can see this bit here. And um, this is all in non volatile RAM. So, which I'll show you another command. So, let's see, where's that five stored? So, that five. Oh, weird. The cursor is in a different position than the screen is showing you. You can see the cursor here. Anyway, so this five is stored at zero one two e. So, so read zero one two. E. Oops, that's one two eight. Read zero one two e, which is thirty five, which is correct, right? So let's change the 5 to an 8. I'm actually going to look on my ASCII chart here. Yeah, yeah, I'm lame. I don't have it. Commit to memory. So that's 38 in hex. So let's write 0, 1, 2, E, 38. Okay. Now let's uh, reset the system. I'll just go to 0, 0, 0. And as you can see, I've changed it. <laughs> so what else we got um, so yeah so we got read and write uh, by specific port specific ports um, I don't have my webcam available to uh, to do a demonstration of that I would have shown you the turning lights on and off but uh, that'll have to be for another video. Hmm. Uh, well, yeah, right. Now, Twenty-four minutes. Okay. But yeah, the um, but the I and the O command definitely reading and writing ports. It it does work well. It's just sometimes you have to mess around certain directions and the registers and that. Um. But yes, so X, except for the receiving data, um, I originally was going to have X modem. Uh, so how that works is I sorry, press X and I tell it, hmm, got a corruption in the memory there, so okay. And I say, well, I want it, so I'm going to put it in. 4,000 and now it's waiting to receive the, the very first character it does not um, does not time out let's see here is it okay I'm just going to copy a binary file you can't see the menu pop up it's weird anyway there we go now the very first character it it waits indefinitely, but as soon as it's received the first character, it'll then it'll apply a timeout on every other character. <clears throat> so I've copied the memory test routine to 4000. So I dump 4000. You can see it's. Uh, so now I've been. Yeah, I've been playing around with. Um, adding headers to code that is designed to run but after being transferred like this you know um, I want chunks of code kind of like an application basically you can copy them to specific locations and it will um, how to explain it <clears throat> well I've been I've been trying to design a BIOS, basically, um, 
a bit like the IBM PCs and Macs and stuff now and uh, I want a set of working routines like reading from screen, writing to screen, uh, reading the keyboard and stuff, doing I.O. Uh, multiplication, division, because Z80 doesn't have that on hardware. And I want to put all these routines all in a single cluster of memory uh, in the ROM and then have them accessible from standalone programs that I've written to run elsewhere. That way we can just call them by the, the memory locations where they're stored and you don't have to rewrite these routines in your own code, hence saving space. So these apps will be um, much smaller in the memory. Uh, the way I've done this, I actually did it with the RAM test routine the one that's being used here is I took the list output from uh, when I compile the monitor the uh, let's see if I can uh, let's see if I can bring that up Get a tinker in here just let me change it on the fly uh, yes, it does, except the cursor is still off. Okay, so this is the code for the monitor. As you can see, I've still got the the header from uh, from Matt Cook because he wrote it. Basically, I will update all this. And so let me load the memory test. It's like fun test. Oh, I've also got to load. I gotta load a couple of more things. Let's see, routine entry and I should look that. Okay. Hmm. Right. So when you assemble using TASM, which is what I'm using, uh it'll create a file is whatever dot lst and what it has here is it will have this here is the address of the uh, <clears throat> so this is the address of where it's going to be in memory actually where it is in the file but that translates to where it is in memory in this case so say like i wanted to find the clear screen uh, function, then I would know it points to that. So then I would create a uh, a new assembly file with um, the labels, which are the same as the ones written here. So like um, let's find a good one. UART TX. Right, so that's at 982. Oh, it's because I'm looking at the wrong screen. UART TX. Okay, the numbers are different here because I originally made this in a previously assembled version of the monitor. But the idea is for the. Um, so you use the same label. And then you tell it that what address you're pointing to, and that way, when you're using things like this RAM test here, I tell it where I'm compiling. I'm telling it that the uh, it's aimed to run at, at hex 4000, which is where in RAM that I'm going to put it. Where I put it, and then I tell it to include these address locations so now I can use the calls as if um, as if it was part of the monitor so call print string so then what it'll do is it'll um, 
it will then call the location, which is that, which will already be assembled in, in the ROM. And then when it returns back from that, it returns back to here. <clears throat> so I don't need to include that in this code, thus making the code like probably a quarter of the size it would be if I had to rewrite all those routines. But um, that will eventually get its own video because it's a bit more complicated. But the idea is I want to build a, a BIOS system, basic input output system, and also a, a boot menu. <clears throat> now the menu will um, so on boot up the menu will then scan the all the, the ROM and stuff and look for a specific header or signature in the header um, in the different locations in memory and uh, that's what I was experimenting with this here except I want to put some uh, hex code in front of it, a unique hex code and then it'll know that's something that it can add to the mem the uh, the menu, so you can then select it upon startup. Uh, I think similar like that is done by uh, the BBC Micro. Um, it's a computer I had when I was a kid. It's it's a European computer. If you watch uh, Gadget UK's channel, he uh, he's been repairing one recently, and uh, that's what reminded me of it. The the BBC Micro has a. Uh, six RAM slots, RAM sockets, and so RAM sockets, you put the ROM in and you can call its command to start the software on that ROM chip just by typing it. The OS will scan through all the ROMs upon startup and it'll know the, uh, it will add, basically add the command to its, its own uh, command set so you can call these ROMs uh, once you've started up and I thought that was a that was a clever idea it's like I, I definitely want to have in uh, in my system um, so I'll probably have a an extra card made up but with um, a bunch of ROM sockets on it so I can put different different ROMs in or maybe even a uh, the cartridges. I got a little header here. This is the it's like when you got the ISA this is actually the 16-bit uh, extension. <clears throat> so we can have a card with some, uh, some like flash ROMs in it. So I got flash ROMs here. And I can just stick stick software on like that. Okay, I found my um, my webcam, so well, it's time to, uh, to show you the demo of the input and output routines. So here we have port A, port B, and port C. That's bit zero, bit seven, bit zero, bit seven, bit zero, bit seven, and uh, the system is currently on. Let's, uh, let's just reset it so the nice banner. Okay. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to put it into a, uh, a known state. So I'm going to set it to outputs right now. Oh, and actually, before we start, this uh, is connected to the 5 volts on the system. So I can uh, stimulate the inputs. But if I was to touch them right now while it's an output, it will, uh, will short the system. So that's why we've got to know what we're doing. So first things I'll start with the outputs. So I will uh, I'll bring up a quick uh, summary of how it works. Uh, we have uh, the, the base address for this IO card is 0, 0, yeah 0, 0 and so the address is contained. 0, 0 is for the uh, port A, 0, 1 is for port B, 0, 2 is for port C, and 0, 3 is the control word register. And, and here's the settings for the control word register. 
Right. Here's the two ones that we're mainly concentrating on is the uh, how to set all the outputs and then set all the inputs. And uh, you can use this chart to figure out which way you want to do it. But this is the, the basic operation. That's uh, so why we're setting as mode zero, which is basic input output mode. Okay, so further ado, let's let's get on with it. So with the output, so we're going to use short select the chip. Okay, command O for output port, and we're going to write to zero three because we're going to set the control word, and all outputs is eight zero. Right now, all the ports are set as output. So if we want to write to port A, so out zero zero, we will do F F. All the lights come on. Let's do the same for B. Zero one F F, and then for oh, so for port C. F F. Go. Let's turn them all off. And obviously, I can I can write them different patterns like five. Uh, see, I can that. Oh. Basically, I just write the uh, the hex word, which is a bit mapping pattern of whatever I want to come out. So that's how the uh, the output command works on this system. Okay, so we're going to try the inputs, but before I can do that, obviously I have to set the control word to tell the 8255 that they're all, I want them all to be inputs in this case. So I'm going to output to the control word, and 9B, now they're all inputs. So, I'm going to touch the very first one here, right, as you can see the light's on. Uh, so I want to input from 0, 0. And you can see, receiver 1. Let's you know, okay, see if I can hold that in place. Let's do those. <coughs> see, 18. And let's try the last bit here. <coughs> this should be an 8, 0. Yeah. And so let's try port B. Let's pick something randomly. Uh, let's try the last one again. Eighty. And port C. I gotta be careful because this first one here is ground. Or if I touch that, I'll short the whole bloody thing out. Can you see that on the camera? You can barely see that. The last, the last one's lit. So input from zero two. It's also eighty. You know. So that's, uh, <clears throat> that's the input output um, command and that's how that works so pretty simple but you can do a lot with it if you know what you're doing so yeah so this is uh this is currently where i'm at with the z80 system and uh i've been like I said, I've been busy with university. I do have a, a, a few weeks of break now. Uh, I got my results back from my uh, the math course I took. I actually come out with a 86 uh, as a final mark. It's got 91% in the uh, in the final exam. And I was really worried I was going to fail it. Uh, but thankfully I didn't, so was was not an easy math class and I'm surprised I got such high mark on it. Uh, most people fail that class apparently. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I guess the only thing to do now is to uh, to sign off. And uh, so what I need to do is uh, yeah, gotta thank all my Patreons. So uh, thank you for supporting me Zeddy and uh, if anyone else is interested in, in supporting me, uh, you know, please uh, feel free to to go to my Patreon site or 
onto my um, my website 39k.ca just slash donations I do take uh, uh, knowledge uh, donations so if anyone's got any nice bits snippets of code they want to add or or even any old hardware they want to want to send or something it's all appreciated uh, yeah so thank you for watching and uh, basically if you like what I do yeah please consider becoming a supporter on patreon and uh, help support my work I do intend to have more videos coming soon thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon goodbye